There's a number that might tell us how stressed we are or whether we have a cold coming. And it's available to anyone who's got a smartwatch. Dr. Christopher Labos is a cardiologist. Hi, Chris. Hi, Mitz. So, Chris, there is something called a heart rate variability or HRV reading on most smartwatches. So what is that? So it's basically a measure of how much your heart rate is fluctuating. I think a lot of people believe that your heart rate, when it's normal, is bang on regular, but it's actually not. It actually varies by milliseconds from beat to beat. And heart rate variability is a measure of how much variability you have between each heartbeat. And so it's actually not a good thing for your heart rate to be rock steady. There should be some variability because your heart rate is always going to have to fluctuate a little bit based on you know whatever you're doing and about autonomic tone. So why is this reading so useful? It's useful because it's giving you a measure of something that you can't normally measure, basically the health of your autonomic nervous system. So this isn't the nervous system that allows you con to control your arms and your legs. This is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system, which taken together regulate a number of bodily functions. And what you want is you want them to be in balance where each one is you know, functioning more depending on whether you need the flight, the fight or flight response or the rest and digest response. And so because there's no easy way to measure that, heart rate variability is one of the most accessible ways to get some sense of how the autonomic nervous system is doing. But Chris, from what I understand, though, a good reading for the heart rate variability isn't the same among people, right? It's, it's not a set number that people have to hit. No, it's not, and that's why. And you have to be a little bit careful about your smartwatch because there's always going to be some degree of measurement error depending on how good a quality of watch it is. But even if you were to measure it perfectly, your heart rate variability can change from one day to the next. It's going to change whether you're sleeping or awake. There's a lot of factors that go into it. It's most useful when you're doing research and you're looking at populations, and it's more useful if you can track it over time. And the other important caveat is that it's only useful if you have a normal heart rhythm. The minute you have an arrhythmia like atrial, atrial fibrillation, all of these numbers go out the window. So there are some caveats to this. So how can we use this reading on our smart watches to help us? Uh, I read somewhere that it can actually tell us if we might be coming down with a cold, for example. It can potentially. Basically, it's going to be a measure that things are not doing well. Now, when you look back historically at where the research on this was, a lot of it was being done after a heart attack to help prognosticate patients. It's not used that much anymore because now we have better techniques and better technology, but it is useful for telling you that something is wrong, whether it's going to be an acute viral illness or whether it's just a general status of you being out of shape. And so it's most useful if you are going to use it as part of a training program. And so if you're the type of person that likes crunching numbers, you can use this to see is your exercise regime actually paying dividends. So then we can actually improve our heart rate variability. Yes, you can. So if you're somebody who smokes, eats unhealthy, and doesn't do a lot of exercise, you reverse those three things, those numbers are going to improve. Now, you don't need those numbers to do those three things. Those three things are something everybody should be doing anyways. But this is a metric that can be altered if you start adopting healthy lifestyle factors. Okay. Well, thank you very much for this, Chris. My pleasure.